I got some exciting news. Uh, at least it's a, it's very exciting for me. Um, anybody who's been following our work um, or my work um, knows a little bit about the magnometer ground station I've developed. Um, it's been running quite well for months now. Um, it's on 24-7. Um, of course this is being run off of a uh, uh, Arduino Nano using an Atmel uh, microcontroller. It wasn't too long ago I found out about a new cube satellite uh, or CubeSat as they're called based on the Arduino and after this video I'll uh, um, I'll attach another video that explains it more in detail and uh, you'll get to see the actual uh, satellite itself um, a CubeSat is well actually here's the Arduino CubeSat itself but these are becoming more popular um, they're very cheap to build they set them up with uh, expeditions on Soyuz rockets um, either with astronauts or with the supply missions and this is just a small cube you could hold in your hand and they literally just get pushed out the door um, once they're on board the ISS and that's how they're deployed so it can be done very cheaply this uh, as you'll find out later um, this particular uh, satellite I'll first show how it's come uh, how it's built it's built in layers around this uh, frame so you've got your communications board on top um, solar panels are on, on all sides it's got a gyroscope and it's got coils in it. it uses it charges those coils and uses the earth's magnetic field uh, to orient itself so that the antennas are aimed at the uh, ground stations for communication. I thought that was pretty innovative. So they can charge the coils in such a way on board this CubeSat that it'll attract or repel uh, kind of like a compass needle in zero gravity and automatically orient itself. And then down below that you've got your power supply, uh, you've got your UHF transceiver, uh, spectrometer board, another spectrometer board, and then you have the most important part which is the payload. And I'm going to show you what's on the payload board now. It's not that much different from what makes my magnometer work. In fact, it's almost exactly the same. This is basically the board that is on uh, the uh, ArduSat. Um, each one of these squares represents uh, the power of a Arduino Nano, which is what's powering my ground station. So you've got, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You've got 16 of these on a board. And then it's got a, uh, it's got another processor up here that um, looks over the tasks that are loaded onto each one of these. So basically each one of these Arduinos can have its own scientific sketches on it. Now I won't need to upload, or I may need to, I'm not sure yet. Um, I could probably put my own sketch on here, but really all I need is uh, on one of the other hardware boards, maybe it's on one of the uh, spectrometers or I'm not sure which one of these layers that it would be on, but one of these boards has the same type of three axis 
digital magnometer uh, sensor that I'm using. So what this means is I can take measurements in Earth orbit environment in nano Tesla scales. I can access this either directly or via a small sketch that I can upload um, because this is an open source uh, science project and available to the community. So I should be able to get just the BX, BY, and BZ data, which is all I need from orbit. That's just, that's a dream come true. And then that information, I would uh, imagine that gets beamed back to Earth and is available um, on their website, which I'll show right here. I just wanted to show you some images of the hardware. Uh, but they have a control center that they're working on here. And this is where you'll be able to, I suppose, uh, get the development libraries that are needed, uh, find out how to access the different sensors that are on board, and uh, I guess you'd have to wait in line, put in a request to upload sketches or request data. But something like this, I would imagine that the magnometer data would be uh, would come down with all the other telemetry and data. So I don't think it'll need a sketch, meaning I won't have to use one of the uh, onboard microcontrollers. I won't have to upload a sketch. Um, I should be able to get the magnometer data from the telemetry and data that's being uh, sent down from the satellite. And I also did not know, um, you can watch this liftoff, but this uh, Soyuz mission uh, to the International Space Station has already taken, uh, taken two of these satellites. So chances are they're already in orbit and deployed. However, they are, their control center website is still in beta. So I'm on a waiting list to get signed up for that. As soon as I do, all I'll really need to do is uh, modify this code which comes with uh, our, my magnometer hardware. And uh, I'll just make some changes to, uh, instead of receiving this from uh, Bluetooth from the Arduino in my house, um, it'll go to the uh, resource, uh, whatever uh, website or wherever I need to go to get this data from the internet which comes directly from the satellite. And then I'll be able to plot exactly the way I'm plotting now with all of the uh, same features. Um, except we'll be able to measure in nanotesla scales. So I'm real excited about this. This is basically uh, taking this ground magnometer experiment uh, scientific instrument that I've developed and through this open source uh, Arduino satellite put my project in low earth orbit. Um, questions, comments, love to hear them. And uh, coming up next uh, will be a mirrored video um, showing the uh, design of the actual CubeSat itself. <laughs> Found Jonathan Loxer from Freetronics. Hey. <laughs> and he's got the um, ArduSat board, the yeah. satellite board. Yeah, this is the payload processor module, which is one of the parts of ArduSat 1 and ArduSat X. Um, those are two satellites that are currently at the International Space Station and they're just about to be deployed into orbit. And this is the board that will run experiments. Each one of these little rectangles is a complete uh, microcontroller with all the supporting parts. And 
So each one of these is essentially equivalent to an Arduino Uno. In fact, it's running the Arduino bootloader, and this chip up here is a supervisor processor, mm -hmm. um, which talks to each of them through multiplexes. So as far as they are concerned, they're an Arduino plugged into a computer, and the supervisor can load new sketches onto them, and each one of these has access to all of the sensors on the satellite. Right. And um, there's also some storage and various other things on here. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that each of these runs totally independently. So you can have 16 experiments running simultaneously and they don't need to have any knowledge of each other. And um, the idea with that is that we can amortise the cost of the satellite across a whole lot of different people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've got a few other boards here as well. So just as an example, this is a little test stack that I've been playing around with on my bench. And this is representative of about the size of the total of the final satellite. It's a 10 centimeter cube. And you can see in the middle there is the payload processor module. It's another one of these. There are currently five of these boards in existence. Two are here, two are in orbit right now, and another one is over in California at the ground station. Fantastic. Um, this on the top is a prototype of a satellite power supply module. So it's got um, input from solar cells so it can charge. Um, yep. It's got a management processor so that it can do things like uh, measure current consumption and battery state. And um, so it's got a couple of high current and switch mode power supplies on here which supply power to the rest of the satellite through the bus. The satellite has a stacking bus that you can see there. So basically the idea is that it's like a stack of pancakes. So the satellite itself is just a series of modules that you build up and they all sit on the same stacking bus. And how do you keep it warm? Because it's in space. Yeah, well, the interesting thing is that um, keeping it warm is not, is not really so much a matter of space being cold, it's more a matter of how do you control the heat. Um, on, there are really three ways that temperature can be transferred between different parts of a system. And um, there is no convection because there's no air, obviously, but you still have radiation. So if you have hot spots, you can radiate heat. Um, basically, the thermal profile of the satellite once it's in orbit, um, it orbits about every 92 minutes and it goes from about minus 40 degrees to about plus 80 degrees over that cycle. So you basically, the board is slammed down to minus 40 degrees yep. and then it's slammed up to plus 80 right. every hour and a half. So okay. it goes but through some pretty still severe... Within, like, it's still it's within still tolerance within of... Yeah. a designable rate. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, it's not ridiculous. So yeah. the problem is that when it's on the dark side of the Earth, so when it's in shadow, mm -hmm. it'll be radiating heat and then once it comes into sunlight, it starts absorbing heat. Right. And it's just a matter of managing that. Excellent. Um, the major problem is yep. batteries, because I mean, we all know batteries don't like getting cold. Mm -hmm. So what a lot of satellites do is have heating coils under the batteries. So when they're in the, on the dark side, they heat up and they keep the batteries warm. Cool. And what's the uplink to this thing? How do you, how does it communicate back to um, There is a radio module, I don't have on this particular stack, but the satellite itself uses two meter and 70 centimeter amateur um, transceiver mm -hmm. uh, modules in it. So uh, in fact, all of that information is published so if you've got the right gear you can listen in on the telemetry it's not encrypted or anything <laughs> and how do they deploy it do they just toss it out the window almost <laughs> um, they are deployed using a device called a p-pod which, um, which stands for poly pico satellite orbital deployer and it's basically a big box with a spring in it yeah. and a door on the front <laughs> yeah, right. so, so what they do is the um, the cubesats go inside the p-pod yeah. uh, which is mounted on a sled on the end of a robotic arm on the space station yeah. so they basically point the arm in the right direction and then release the door and yep. the spring pushes them out. Pushes it out? Yeah. And that's it? That's it. Awesome. So the space station itself is travelling at about 28,000 kilometres an hour yep. in its orbit. So they um, they take on the same velocity basically as the space station. Right. And, and then the orbit decays over about six months or so. Oh, six months. Yeah. Okay. They've got no propulsion yep. so they can't actually change their orbit. Right. But they have orientation control um, using it. things um, called magnet torque which is basically three big coils so they react against the Earth's magnetic field so essentially it, it just acts wow. like a compass needle. Oh because needle. there's no friction. That's right, there's you no friction. Need, there's no friction. So you all you do is you energise the coil and you can rotate the cube oh, in any no direction way. you like. Yeah, oh. it's one of those things that when you hear about it, it's like, oh, that's so course, obvious. Of course, <laughs> I wouldn't have thought of it. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, with magnetor, because you can get about plus or minus five degrees pointing accuracy. Yep. 
Wow. And, um, there are and some you could do that for any mass yeah. in theory. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Right? That's what I think exactly. Right. But they don't do that on yeah, that's, spacecraft, that's, do they? No, that's, that is oh, done on a lot of satellites. It. Oh, on, on satellites. Um, otherwise, right. it's done a, a, with um, reaction wheels. So basically, right. a motor with a mass on it, and you spin the wheel, and then the, um, the spacecraft rotates in the opposite Here direction. I was thinking that they all use hydrazine, mm. you know, fuel no. for, the, <laughs> for the orientation. No, but one of the limitations yeah. with CubeSats is for yeah. safety reasons they don't like you sending up any kind, anything that could be explosive or dangerous in any way. So uh, they have to go up totally inert, so they're not allowed to be powered up until they, after they have been deployed. All right, interesting. Does that only apply to CubeSats? Only applies to um, the little players, or it, do the big really players get a free on, pass? Probably. Uh, it really depends on <laughs> how the deployment is happening. Yeah. So the thing is that CubeSats are pretty much second-class citizens when it comes to space tech. Yeah. So they're hitching a ride with other missions. If you're the primary mission, then you can specify what you want, and um, and it's done to suit your requirements. Got it. There are some CubeSats now. Now they're experimenting with active propulsion systems as well. Mm. And people can upload their own sketches to this and yeah, exactly. can't Exactly, that's right. Fantastic. So there's a sketch in space. <laughs> yeah, so there's a software tool that um, it runs in your browser. Mm. So it's an IDE in the browser, and you can plug your own Arduino into your laptop, test that your experiment works, and then there's a little drop down, and, and basically it says deploy to. You can deploy to your Arduino or deploy to satellite. <laughs> <laughs> it sends it via the internet to the ground station and it's then uplinked to the satellite uh, and then it's loaded onto one of these yep. processes and executed and then the results are sent back to you. Did anyone think about putting a camera on it so that you can see yep. real time that your LED's blinking? <laughs> no, um, there are cameras on the satellite but they're not pointing at the board. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> not pointing back at itself. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks John. Hope Thanks, it works. Dad. So it's been so deployed in the next... Well, what? we don't exactly know. It's in the work queue for the astronauts once right. they get around to it. The way it works is there's no specific schedule. They have yep. a list of things to do and they get through a certain number each day. Got so it. sometime in the next month or two, they'll be deployed. Fantastic. All right, good luck. Thanks. Thanks.